think the area to watch is reboundings tonight. Can the Crimson Tide keep the Tigers off the glass? And how many threes can Alabama make in order to keep this game close? Joe Vasily throws it in the air. Denise Brooks and Safe Esho join him on the officiating crew. And a quick whistle here and a foul called in the opening four seconds of the game. Key for Alabama. Essence Cody has to be able to stay on the floor. Cody, the freshman, posts. Take a look at the LSU starting 5-3 of the top eight scorers in the SEC. Michaela Williams, eighth in the SEC in scoring. Morrow, fourth in the SEC. And as we mentioned, Reese, the number two scorer in the SEC. And you're seeing Alabama come out to a 2-3 matchup zone on the out-of-bounds play and stay in it throughout the possession. Over the top, good catch by Reese against the double and a jump ball. Good defense by Alabama. Possession arrow will give it to the tie. Starting five for Alabama, Loyal McQueen, the point guard, brings it across half court. Barker is averaging better than 19 points a game in SEC play. Jessica Timmons is the number three scorer, and Aliyah Nye is someone who has to get going. 63 threes on the season, but made just one against Arkansas. Looking for Nye to set a lot of screens and get her shot. You're also seeing where Essence Cody has to come up big, but not as big as Sarah Ashley Barker. Baseline out of bounds play, run to perfection for Barker. Johnson waiting for the Morrow screen. Van Lith, good entry to Reese for two. Van Lith averaging better than four assists a game. Good for fifth in the conference. I think a key for Alabama here today as well is to reverse the basketball. Get LSU chasing a little bit. Both head coaches not happy with their team's defense on Saturday. I'm sorry, on Sunday. Shot clock down to seven. Barker, Nye gets a wide open look for three. Bama needs those to go down today. Kim showing her stripes here today. You were waiting to get that one, weren't you? After you wore that sequin jacket. You wore it better. In Baton Rouge a couple of weeks ago. I feel like a fashion expert. <laughs> Williams to Van Lith. Van Lith, a little hesitation. Picked up her dribble. Now to Morrow. Skip pass. Three-pointer on the way. Is good. LSU attempted just two threes against Auburn. They were 0 for 2 in that game. Nye back outside. Timmons has a look for three. Thought she had it. Rebound comes to Williams. Numbers the other way for LSU, but Alabama retreating. Williams, though, made something out of it. Good play by the freshman, getting her first two, averaging 16 points a game. Well, it's something to watch as Alabama shoots the threes. Does that allow LSU to get out and run? Barker, nifty little dribble, couldn't do anything with it. LSU back the other way. Van Lith, Williams, yes. So far, all Alabama has offensively is that basket on the baseline out-of-bounds play from Barker. Now another turnover for the Crimson Tide. Van Lith. Tomorrow. Down on the push. Barker all the way. Count it. And the foul. I think it's a key for Alabama to try to keep this crowd engaged in this game. We saw how that helped Alabama's friends down the road in Auburn on Sunday. Big crowd turned out, 7,000-plus, a record crowd. As that game got going, they got more into it, and they got loud in the end. Good fight on the miss by Barker. You're also seeing Christy Curry go to her bench early in this game now, where Berger also checking in. Jones, the freshman from Jackson, Alabama, averaging three points a game. Three-point shot is a big part of the Alabama offense. Not as big as last year, but still a big part. Barker gets tied up by Flauge Johnson. And then it's the offensive rebound putback. So if you can take those two areas away from Angel Reese, which Christy Curry talked a lot about in shoot around today, that gives Alabama a greater margin of error for a victory. Nye wide open look for three. 44% from outside the three-point. Poa for Van Lith. Thrown outside, Johnson travel. And Eric, one thing against the zone, I always wanted the ball to move side to side. 
and move quickly. What you're seeing with LSU right now is the ball is one pass, and they're holding in a second, and then making a decision. It allows the defense to rotate, allowing Alabama to get matched up. Knife forces this one, but maybe heating up. A 9-0 run for Alabama to go in front. One thing to watch when LSU has the ball is the positioning of the low post defense against the bigs of LSU. Morrow for two. So far, a good job by Alabama on the glass. They were beat up on the boards. That's going to be an offensive foul as Poa takes the charge. There you see the numbers. Second most in the SEC, 27 charges taken. First foul on Barker. Reese gets in that deep. It's over. Barker rolling to the basket is Cody stuck with it and she'll earn a trip to the free throw line. A freshman from Valdosta, Georgia to the free throw line. As a team, Alabama 68% from the free throw line, 10th in the SEC. They only got there seven times on Sunday. Three for seven from the free throw line. I want to take more free throws than LSU makes. You and I both looked at one another because we thought that was a tall <laughs> that, task. That sounded like a math problem that would not work out to Alabama's favor, but that's the goal set for Bama here tonight. Well, and the head coach knew something we didn't because right now, five attempts for Alabama, zero for LSU. Die open again for three. Eight first quarter points for Aliyah Nye. That entry knocked away by Cody. Nye two for three from outside the three-point line. Again, was just one for four. Right there in front of the official. You can't not allow a player to figure the movement to move on their cut, and that's what Timmons got called for. First foul on Timmons. Van Lith stuck with it and gets her first points. Great pass, but even better read by Haley Van Leith. Carly Weathers is in the game, and this is going to be a foul on Timmons. Getting tangled up with Van Lith. That will be the second personal foul on Jessica Timmons. LSU will hold for one. So once again, Williams has the ball at the top of the key. You see Alabama going to do their 2-3 matchup to prevent her from going one-on-one -on -one from the top. Nye McQueen teeing up at the top. Van Lith launches. That's blocked from the outside. Morrow can't get the follow. Del Rosario got a hand on it. Time for Barker to get off a heave, and it is going to be off the mark. But well, that's a strong first quarter for Alabama. They're on top by one. But we know how good this LSU offense is. So Alabama's got to keep doing what they're doing. And a key for Alabama that I saw in that first quarter is they were setting really good screens. That has to continue. Alabama, first possession of the quarter. Weathers for McQueen. One key number from that first quarter. Timmons, one of the starters, on the bench with two personal fouls. Nye couldn't get it. Del Rosario with the rebound. Another number that jumps out. LSU did not attempt a free throw in the first quarter. So I would think that would be part of the conversation with Kim Mulkey to her team during the quarter break. Take it to the basket. And another key number. The third key number is zero second chance points for LSU in that first quarter. Johnson's got five. Barker answers on the other end. Van Lip, four to shoot. Van Lip, McQueen standing her ground. And a whistle is called as the shot clock was expiring. LSU's offense getting to the free throw line, making free throws. At the set up a one for two, this time for Van Lift. Nye for three. LSU is losing touch with Aliyah Nye here, and she's making. LSU pay 11 points. So that started with Sarah Ashley Barker's dribble penetration. So Flage Johnson gets caught looking, thinking she needs to stop ball. That's why Nye had the time to get the shot off. Reese around Barker for two. Six for Reese. McQueen takes it at Van Lith, who gets called for the foul. So if you're trying to keep up with a high-octane offense. The way her team is just playing defense, period, this season. And most importantly, in transition, she said, we're just matching up and not aware of where the ball is at times. Del Rosario kicks it to Johnson. 
Johnson, no. Got her miss, and we'll go to the free throw line. But it's difficult, I think, for Sarah Ash Barkley because she's such an aggressive ball player on both ends of the floor. So if I'm Christy Curry for the next eight minutes of this half, I'm going to try to steal seconds, minutes with her, maybe do some offense defense as much as possible. On the other end, you're Kim Mulkey. What are you doing with Parker staying on the floor? Because she's obviously the glue for this team, and you can see it right here. This is what she does. I think that's the move right now. Yeah, good call, Christy. They're going to bring Carly Weathers into the game, and Parker will check out. Janae Kent on the floor, the freshman with it for Poa. Entry to Reese. Reese is fouled. She was in great position on that. Morrow's got the rebound, but it went off her foot. Alabama ball. Get downhill, pull defenders, and open up for three-point shots. McQueen blocked by Poa. A trouble getting it in. And that's because no one set a screen. They ran to spots. Reese takes it away. Reese all the way. Offensive foul. But great job of Aliyah Nye not giving up on it, sliding in there to draw that charge. Johnson out to defend Nye, who steps inside the line for two. Aliyah Nye, red hot so far. Shot clock at five. You see the double when the ball goes down low by the perimeter players for Princeton Tide. Battle for the loose ball. Possession arrow will give it to Alabama and head down to the end of the bench. He doesn't look very comfortable right now. So Janet Cunningham, 6'5", senior from Long Island, comes in. Watch a screen, the screener action here for Nye after the on ball. Couldn't get it to her. The queen fell down. She tripped over her own feet. Johnson tipped by Nye. Good job by Alabama to disrupt LSU for the moment. Morrow can't get it. Del Rosario. LSU's loss to Auburn ended their 16-game winning streak, the longest streak in the nation. They were held 32 points under their season average. The 62 was season low. Here in Alabama, they have turned out tonight to see the defending national champions take on Alabama. McQueen to Williams. Flauge to the basket. Strong take by Flauge Johnson. The freshman Cody will try it from deep. 18th three-point attempt of the season for the freshman. Maybe not the best selection right there. Well, especially Del Rosario matching up with her. I would have liked to see her go down into the low block. Johnson kicks it to Van Lith. The foul was called, and we went away to commercial. She got fired up. She kept it going. It got a little bit more heated after that, and now the conversation a little calmer, but still getting the point across, or at least trying to. McQueen. Nice take by Loyal McQueen. To tie to 27. And that is one thing Kim Mulkey harped on yesterday in their practice. We cannot allow dribble penetration by the perimeters of Alabama. And Lutz gives it over to Johnson. Johnson Timmons in the game with the two fouls. Nice feed, Del Rosario for two. But Alabama, not much happening offensively right now for the Crimson Tide. So Timmons will pull from deep. Johnson's got the rebound. LSU a chance to build a little momentum right here. They're up by two. They've got the basketball. Del Rosario inside for two. That's what you call muscling it up by Del Rosario. This is why this offense is so difficult. You can't cheat off somebody because they can all go off for 30 on any given night. Parker can hit. Morrow with the rebound. Christy Curry, yes, she will. She'll take a timeout because it's all LSU right now. Got to 
get points and easy scoring opportunities. Better screening by Alabama. Poor pass by Laura McQueen. And Johnson dribbles it off her foot. Put a nigh stepping in between the legs. The knock that I played, didn't it? That, that's what I thought. Barker, two nigh. That's a huge trip right there. Ten offensive rebounds now for the Tigers. Paula, open look in the corner. Williams, no. Del Rosario. Del Rosario. Here comes Bama, final minute of the first half. McQueen buries a three. <laughs> Williams stepped on the baseline. Five. Down to three, Nye has it blocked by Johnson, but Johnson called for the foul. She's got 19 first half points. After the third free throw to make sure LSU can't get the ball off the floor quickly. Krista Curry very specific, and when she wanted Williams to go to the table, it won't matter because she missed the free throw. That heave is off the mark. Alabama ends the half on an 8 nothing run to take a lead to the locker room at halftime. Van Lip defended by McQueen. They get Reese a touch off to Williams. A little fade away for two. Six points now for the freshman. And Eric, 20 first half paint points for LSU. I would like to see them go inside to either Morrow or Reese Moore here early in the third quarter, especially with Barker with the two fouls. Barker's going to get called for her third foul. She just has to be smart here the rest of this quarter, especially. Great job of Cody there to come up off the on-ball screen by Van Lith. Morrow takes it at Barker. There's a whistle. Who picked up the foul? That's her second. 82% from the line this season. Got to play defense without fouling if you're Alabama because we keep talking about how good LSU is at drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. Timmons. Timmons shut off by Reese. Back outside, Barker launches a deep one, no. And the rebound for Reese. That's her sixth rebound to go along with seven points. Johnson, more wide open, three. Timeout, Alabama. LSU has come out on fire here to start the second. Three point shooting has turned into a huge strength for South Carolina. Gamecocks take out Texas A&M and College Station on Sunday before that showdown next Thursday. LSU has a showdown with Arkansas on Sunday. Out of the Alabama timeout, back and forth we go. Nye missed on one end, and then it's going to be a turnover. Something that hurt them against Auburn. They only converted 18 of 30 of those shots at the rim. Morrow inside to Williams. Carolina next week. Last year when the two teams met, LSU had won 23 in a row before going to Columbia. That winning streak came to a close. The longest winning streak in LSU program history. By South Carolina, 88-64. LSU is 9 of 14 from the free throw line all since the start of the second quarter. And now Alabama, 9 of 11 from the free throw line. And now some pressure in the backcourt from the Crimson Tide. I mean, I like just mix it up a little bit. LSU getting comfortable, getting some uh, chemistry going in the half-court offense. So take a little time off the shot clock. Falling back into the 2-3 matchup. Johnson tomorrow. Reese with a putback. She now a plus 11 in rebounding margin. And now a turnover. Barker almost got whistled for a reach in. Johnson back the other way with the finish. Used to seeing from LSU, their defense getting stops or getting steals and getting out and running in transition. Morrow 
and Barker gets called for her fourth. She picked up her third at the 9.34 mark of this third quarter. So it's time for Nye. Nye's got to be more vocal on the defensive end. Alabama's got to try to figure out a way to get stops. they got to move on the pass, and they've got to box out. Haley Van Rift for three. LSU has their largest lead of the night. Nye walked. You can see another strong third quarter performance for LSU. They make the right adjustments in the locker room at halftime, and they add to their lead. Well, they make the right reads in the half court in the third quarter. Christie was an assistant at Louisiana Tech from 96 to 99. Kim was the associate head coach at Louisiana Tech, 96 to 2000. That was the overlap out of the timeout. Morrow, count it, and one. This is why she came to LSU, to show that she was better than just being a rebounder and offensive player. Reads the pass, shoots the gap, takes it up for the and one. Morrow leading LSU with 13 points tonight. Nye couldn't get it. Play still on though. McQueen sticks with it. Batted around Cody. That gets pinned on the rim and she was fouled. So here comes Parker, 3.59 to go in the third quarter. You've got to cut into this deficit before the fourth quarter. It doesn't matter that you put Sarah Ashley Barker back in. Now on the flip side, does Kim Mulkey go right at Barker trying to get her out of the game? Would you? Yes. You always want to take the best player off the floor if you can. Right now it is Barker guarding Morrow. Reese spinning against Cody for two. Timmons, Williams overplayed on defense and paid the price. Timmons a chance for a three-point play. First points to Timmons. Alabama back to that 2-3 matchup. Really small in the back line right now. Reese, offensive rebound, rips through and gets fouled. Two smaller players on the back line. I'm, I'm including Barker as a smaller player there. Reese, one rebound away from her 10th double-double in the 44th of her LSU career. Morrow talking a little bit as well. Here's McQueen, the kick to Timmons. Good read by Morrow to get there defensively. Poa, big deep pass. Reese would have been an all-time assist right there, but Van Lith couldn't knock it down. Scramble for the basketball tie-up. Play would have erupted by the LSU fans. Poe with the lead pass. Ooh. Reese knowing she was lead, being let out of bounds. Flips it over her shoulder. And you heard the collective awe by the LSU section when that shot didn't go down. Eric, watch Morrow defensively. Switching on the smaller guards. Gets called for the foul. Morrow with two personal fouls. Can this be, will this be a good defensive team? And she knows right now, yes, she's got a great scoring team. But if the defense doesn't get better, there may not be a Final Four run. Alabama a chance to build a little momentum here in the third quarter, but then Timmons turns it over. Johnson denied at half court. Tiptoeing around half court. Reese inside against Cody. Gets called for the travel. McQueen, a lot of dribbling, and a foul is called. So four on Johnson. She goes to the bench. Just a moment. Aaliyah Nye isn't on the court. I don't see her on the bench at the moment either. But she may have ducked down the hallway for the moment. Keep an eye open as... This quarter winds down. Van Lift. Chased by Williams. Entry to Reese. Tapped it up and in on the follow. Barker spins to the basket. McQueen trying to take Reese off the dribble. Weathers, good find of McQueen. Did not get it off in time. What's Alabama? got behind, I think they started putting pressure on themselves. It led to more miscues, and that just feeds into the beast known as LSU. Reese, a beast on the inside.
eight of her 12 rebounds, by the way, on the offensive. Board. She's taking some good contact here today. She's worked hard. Barker, that was impacted by Reese. It looked like are some of the best basketball that I've seen Angel Reese play on both ends of the floor. Last season, averaging 23 points a game and 15 rebounds a game, led the SEC. And leading LSU to the national championship against the pressure. Williams through traffic. And a foul is going to be called. Box out here on the free throw line. Execute on the offensive end. Getting one another open. It's gotten a little slip. There's been slippage here. This you got Parker in the corner. Too late. Morrow recovers. Parker leans in for two. Four team fouls now on Alabama. So next one will send LSU to the free throw line the rest of the way. Parker had to pull back, trying to defend Reese. Morrow on the putback and the foul. Chance, you've mentioned it a couple times. I think you've been impressed with it. What else has been the flat out adamant, eager to see how their teams would respond tonight. Alabama responded well early. It's just been a lot of LSU on both ends of the floor to try to overcome. And I'm not going to speak for Kim Mulkey because I know she has bigger aspirations. Van Lith to Johnson back in the game. Flauge playing with four. Reese tried one from outside earlier. This is where she's at her best, but she can't get it with the right hand. There's Morrow again. The steal and the score for Anissa Morrow. Timeout is called by Alabama. Morrow, a difference maker. The three-point shot was so big for Alabama in the first half. It has not been there in the second half of the Crimson Tide. Five makes in the first half have not made any here in the second. Four on the shot clock. Barker, good pass inside Cunningham. Johnson. And a foul is going to be called. LSU only attempted one more free throw than Alabama. Remember, LSU did not attempt a free throw in the first quarter. That's why you have to be so disciplined to play this Ooh. LSU ball club. you got to take care of it first and foremost. Otherwise, it leads out to them getting in transition. Good defense by Angel Reese. She knocked it away. LSU back the other way. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Van Lith, Williams, and Barker has fouled out. Williams to shoot to 86% from the free throw line. McQueen fouled by Van Lith. Two free throws for McQueen. Give Flaugier Johnson a lot of credit for shutting her down, can't you? Absolutely. The effort has been... You can't miss her in transition. At least three times in transition, Nye's been open, and they have not found her. Some of that was on display here this evening. I remember talking to Kim last year. I think Flaugier needed to give herself a little bit of a break. And making clutch free throws, getting an offensive rebound put back, getting the steal. So many games down the stretch, that freshman stepped up to make key plays. McQueen too strong, Morrow with the rebound. And rebounding margin, they on the season average a plus 15 in margin. That's good for third in Division One. This is where LSU has to be better. They've got to know the mismatch. Great backdoor by Williams, but Morrow had Carly on the block. And then LSU. Oh, it's controlled by Cody before the horn, and a foul is going to be called. Alabama, the house that Sarah Patterson built with her six national championships. And you you were doing so well, I and you got to the finish line, and you stumbled there with I, your I gymnastics fell, I fell on my face. I'll you were it. so I close. fell on my face. That's how I am in, in gymnastics. In that 100-meter dash, you got to, like, the 98-meter mark, and then you just face-planted. Well, I'm very proud of you. myself. I was on the pummel house. I was on the pummel horse, and I just ran into it. That's what I did. I think she saw that, but when you're playing LSU, a top-10 team. It would have, could have, should have for Alabama, but effort was there. I thought what happened is third quarter, some adjustments by LSU. I thought their defense picked up, and that's where Alabama has to stay true to what, what they did well in the first half. That's what I didn't see, the setting the screens, the solid box outs. So if you're going to upset a ranked team, you got to be consistent for 40 minutes. 
McQueen launches a three. No. And a rebound for Moore. Here in the fourth, LSU will improve to 17-2 and two on the season, 4-1 and one in the SEC, and they will have their bounce-back victory after falling to Auburn. Reese has it knocked away. Numbers the other way for Alabama. Williams takes it at Van Lith. And Van Lith has fouled out. The one commonality with those three of the four, because you mentioned Arkansas's next for LSU. Tennessee with a big bounce back, by the way. One minute to go. LSU by 20. Morrow has a tip. Poet tracks it down, and she was fouled. I think it's going to be a track race. That's good defensively. They're good at scoring the ball. We know and we have seen in her time at Baylor, you can win it all with six. The PMAC is going to yes. be unbelievably electric on Thursday night. I mean, it will be loud early. It will be loud for game day. It will be packed. It will be purple. It will be a spectacle. And that was a challenge for LSU last year when they went to Columbia, and they weren't ready for that moment with that loud, big crowd at Colonial Life. But it was a learning experience for LSU. They put it in the bank, and look how that season last year ended up for them. This game ends up well for LSU. They win by 20. They were down by one at halftime, a big third quarter. And in the end, it's a victory, 78-58 the final for the Tigers as they bounce back after the loss last time out. Absolutely incredible third quarter for LSU.